Okay, so first things first, what is residential care? It's essentially long-term care, which is provided in a care home. There are a few types. So residential care is where the person is offered personal care, such as help with washing, getting dressed, or going to the toilet, um, eating perhaps, and also taking medication. There's also an element of nursing care, and that provides personal care, but it also has qualified nurses who are on duty at all times and to help with any nursing needs that the person may have. And so this type of care home is suitable for people who might need like long term or frequent medical attention during the day and also during the night. Next slide, please. So there's a few types of care homes which are available in the in the UK. There's the uh, and in in other areas. There's the uh, care homes. These, these are like I said earlier, that which help. We have the staff available, which helps with personal care, such as washing, dressing, and medicine. And they may also offer things such as day trips and outings as well. There's care homes with nursing, and that's referred to as nursing homes, and that offers twenty four hour assistance with nursing care. There's also care homes which has dementia care, and that's designed to make people who live with dementia feel comfortable and also safe. And they also have qualified nurses who have dementia training as well. There's also care homes which are called dual registered, and that's um, who accept residents who need both personal care and nursing care as well. Next slide, please. So you may be at a situation where you're not too sure whether you want a care home for your loved ones. And you may be thinking, are there any options that you can possibly consider before having to go down that route? For many people, care homes is more of a last resort and they want to explore what other options they have available to them. So you can adapt the home to make it easier to live in. And some works and adaptations can be funded under what is called a Disabled Facilities Grant from the local authority. And that's basically a grant given to the person to adapt their home. It is means tested, so finances are looked at. And what essentially happens here is an occupational therapist will assess the individual to see what sort of adaptations and equipment that they may need. And so maybe that is an option that you might want to explore before considering care homes. Another option is getting, getting support at home to help with things that may be becoming difficult. So support can be provided through the local authority social care team, through, th through something called a needs assessment if the person is found eligible. So a needs assessment will explore what care and support somebody needs at home and in the community. And so it's a care package of a certain amount of hours each week um, paid for by the council. It is means tested as well. So you may be able to get financial help through the local authority. Another option is to move into sheltered housing. And this is where the person can live independently with more support on site. And another option which um, we often see through the advice line is uh, where the person moves in with a family member, but that only, only if that works for you and also works for the person as well. You might be wondering, you know, how do you know if residential care is the right option for your loved ones? It might be time to consider residential care if the person that you provide care for is struggling to live at home. And that's even with support from carers, family and friends, you know, even if they do have a care package, even if they do have friends um, and family helping out, but they're still struggling. It might also be a good option where you're, you know, maybe the person can no longer live safely at home because there may be increased risks or falls or mal malnourishment, maybe they need, you know, more support throughout the night, um, and so maybe care homes is an option then. It may also become apparent that residential care is the right option if the person has had a needs assessment, and the assessment has concluded that the residential care is the right option.
for that person. So they will assess that, you know, based on the person's needs, they think that it's best met in the residential setting. It may be that the person has a complex medical condition which requires the attention, care and support of qualified people in, in care homes during the day and night. If the person that you're providing care for, if they're unable to make decisions for themselves, you can make decisions on their behalf if you have something called a power of attorney or you are a court appointed deputy. If you don't have any of those in place, then it's nothing to worry about. Um, the care home and local authority should still consider your views, wishes and feelings as part of the process. It is, however, really important that you, you, know, you start to think about power of attorneys and, and deputyships though. Next slide, please. So if you are looking at um, residential care, you might be thinking, well, um, how do I find it? Like, where do I start? You know, how do I know the home's okay? And, you know, who, where do I go to look for it? Because, the, you know, you go onto Google and you search in residential care and, you, you know, a thousand searches will come back up for you. Your local council, or if you're living in Northern Ireland, your local health and social care trust can provide you with a list of homes that are in your area. And so they can help you in finding a home that is suitable. If the council or trust are helping towards the cost of the care home, they will generally provide you with homes which are within their budget and which the person has been assessed to need. So I've put a link here for you it's from the Housing Care Services directory and that's where you can also find care homes in the UK. The Care Quality Commission also has a search tool to help you find care homes and just put the link there for you too. And the good thing about the Care Quality Commission is that they also have ratings on care homes that it has investigated which you can also look into. When you have a short list of the homes that you like you it's advisable to go and visit them and these care homes should allow you to visit the homes to check them out and to ask questions. I would suggest that you arrange a suitable date and time so that you're given the attention that you need um, at that time so it's not rushed for you. Next slide, please. So when you're visiting these care homes, it's really important to ask um, questions. And so these types of questions that you ask will help you to make an informed decision as to whether you want to have that person have your loved ones go to this care home so some questions you can think about are what types of activity what types of activities does the home offer its residents does the home offer trips away maybe how often is the home cleaned and is it cleaned by a cleaning company is it deep cleaned you know what's the cleaning um, routine there how does the care home ensure that its residents interact with each other to avoid loneliness? How are emergencies dealt with? What is the home's COVID-19 response? Are the home's other rooms suitably adapted to meet the person's needs? Is there a garden or suitable outdoor space for residents to go out and get fresh air? Is there a supervisor on duty at all times? Next slide, please. Now, the next question is an important one because many people do worry that, you know, when their loved ones are in a residential setting, that staff will just sort of barge into their rooms. So a question you can ask is, will staff knock before entering a residence room? Do you know, they need that privacy and that space. Are there residents' relatives' meetings that take place? Who provides the food and is it possible to see a menu? How does the home support its residents to practice their religious or spiritual beliefs? What is the ratio of care workers to its residents? So, you know, is, say, your loved ones are in the care home, how many care workers do they have allocated to them on a daily basis? And what are those timings? What training do staff get? Can residents choose to have male or female carers? Does the home cater for dietary preferences? 
um, is there a nearby GP practice that is responsible for its residents' health needs? It may be that your loved ones are being asked to go to a care home which is outside of their normal living area, and so they've had to change GPs. So is there a GP practice that the care home work with? Next slide, please. So there may also come a time where you feel that a decision made by the care home or the local authority is not right and you don't agree with it and you might be thinking what can I do? So some decisions that we have come across at, um, in our advice line and through my work is that they may close the care home down and evict all residents. They may just decide to evict a residence for, um, for whatever reason. They may change the carers that your loved ones have had for a long period of time. They may change visiting times and they may stop activities and days away. So these are just examples. It's not to say that these things will happen. It's just things that you know have come across where people have come for advice on these issues. Whatever the decision is, if you feel that the decision is not reasonable, you can ask for the appeals process and ask that they review their decision. You may also want to use a complaints process as well to investigate the matter. You are of course welcome to um, seek advice from us here at Carers UK if you have any concerns about any decisions made which affect you or your loved ones as well. Next slide please. So if you are thinking to make a formal complaint, um, it's suggested that you first complain to the care home manager. This would be an informal process, but if things don't improve, then you can also start the formal process. It may be that you don't like the response from the care home manager and you want to take it further. So then you can start the formal process of, of complaining. When you are discussing your concerns or complaining, it's really important to think about the following. Um, think about what's happened and when and be really specific about that. So if you notice that things are going wrong, start to jot down some, you know, the dates and times that these things are happening. Include the names and dates of when these things happened where possible and include any evidence that you might have. It might be an email, letter, phone call, text message. If it was a verbal conversation that you've had with a staff member, or an incident that your loved ones have had in the care home, then just make a note, like a little attendance note, all that needs to say is this is what happened on this date and, and that's all. If the care home is being funded by the local authority, you can also speak with them to see how they can get involved and support the dispute that you have. It may be that during the complaints process, the things don't improve and you're not, you haven't got the outcome that you want. And so it doesn't have to stop there. You can take it further to the local government and social care ombudsman and get it investigated. The Care Quality Commission, they don't, um, unfortunately, they don't investigate complaints, but they can be informed about any concerns that you may have about a care home. If, um, before, in one of my earlier slides, I mentioned that um, Care Quality Commission sort of, um, you know, investigates care homes and they give a rating, they sort of assess them on good, bad, average, needs improvement, and that sort of thing. So you can see the care home that your loved ones are in and see what rating they've had. And you can read the full report on the Care Quality Commission too. Next slide, please. So when you are your loved ones are moving to a care home, it can feel really daunting. It's a new space, new environment, new people, you know, they're moving out of their homes to a, a new place. And, you know, as we get older, it, it's a bit more difficult to deal with change. So there are some things that can be done to make that transition a lot easier. It can bring in some comforts from home. That might be things like photos, music, even blankets. Um, it can you you can check whether you can bring your own bed as well. Just check with the home on that one. Um, finding your way around. So it might take time to get used to the environment with in the care home. So 
you can always ask staff for help where it's needed and help to find things. You know, the first few weeks and months, it will take a bit of time to navigate, navigate around. Um, staying connected is also really important, so staying in touch and ask whether it's possible if a phone line can be kept in the room so that they can keep in touch with their family and friends. Or they can obviously use, use their mobile as well. Next slide, please. So the big question is always about how do we pay residential care? It's really expensive and is there any help available? So the person that you're providing care for, they may be eligible for support from the local authority or maybe from the NHS if they have health needs. So NHS funding is where the person's needs are health based only. And so the NHS will arrange and pay for the care under the NHS Continuing Health Care Scheme. If you do not meet the criteria for NHS Continuing Health Care, but if the person you provide care for needs nursing care, then the NHS will provide a contribution towards the cost of the nursing care directly to the nursing home. So there is some help available there. In order to get this type of assessment to see whether the person is eligible for NHS care, an assessment is needed, and that can be done through your GP or the local authority. With social care funding, it's means tested, whereas NHS is not means tested. With social care, which is where the local authority get involved and help, if you have over 23,250, you are, co you are considered a self-funder and will need to pay the care fees yourself. If the person has between 14,250 and 23,250, you contribute towards it through a means test. And if you have less than 14,250, then a contribution will be assessed again through the means test. It's really difficult to say what that contribution might be because the local authority will take into account whatever it is in your bank account, um, you know, your income that you get regularly, and also any disability expenses that you might have. Next slide, please. Now, a question that we often get is often carers coming to us to say, you know, do I need to sell my parents' home so they can pay for their care fees? If the care home placement is a permanent placement, it will not be included in the means test if it's still occupied by the person's partner or former partner, unless they are estranged. Um, their estranged or divorced partner if they are also a lone parent, a relative who is age 60 or over, a relative who is disabled, and a child who is under the age of 18. If the property is going to be included in the means test, then the council has to ignore it for the first 12 weeks of care, and that's put in place to help you settle in and to get the finances sorted out. If a short-term or temporary placement is required, then the home will not be included in the means test. It may be that after, for example, a hospital admission, that on discharge, the hospital advised that they should go into a care home for, you know, four to eight weeks. In those situations, the home is not taken into account. Next slide, please. So we do often sometimes also get inquiries from carers and they often say to us that, you know, it's such a difficult decision to put my parent, for example, into a care home and feeling quite guilty um, because, you know, in some cases the caring responsibility does end at that stage and that's difficult for some people. Although it's a really difficult decision to make, it may be the best decision for that person and their family. It is really common to feel emotions of guilt, but managing those feelings is, is also an ongoing process. And some things to help you think that you've made the right decision in sending your loved ones to a care home is that they're in good hands at a care home. There are many benefits of living in a care home. It's important to talk to somebody about how you're feeling, like talking to a trusted friend or family member will help. In some cases, your GP may be able to refer you to um, certain NHS services to help you with, with talking, such as talking therapy, things like that. 
people working in care homes, they're professional and they're qualified care workers. So they will be able to, you know, look after the person. And like I said, if you've if you've got a bit of a few concerns about the care home, then just go back to the questions list and ask those questions and you should hopefully be put at ease. You will be able to visit regularly to provide support and influence your loved one's care without that added pressure as well. Next slide, please. So if you are interested in getting in touch with us, if you maybe have a question that you know you're you want to ask following this presentation, then please do you're welcome to obviously we're gonna have the questions and uh, discussions now as well. But if you you know if you remember something tomorrow, then please do reach out. And so you can email us or call us, and you can follow us on social media for you know updates as well. And if you want to find out a bit more about our online sessions, then you're welcome to join our next ones too.